Okay, good morning. I would like to talk about the screening software of the MS-39 and the applications in keratoconus, especially in intracorneal ring uh, segments. So, as uh, Dan was saying, it first uh, started with the keratoconus uh, screening software of the Sirius, which was uh, published in 2012 by uh, Dr. Maria Arbelaez and the team of CSO, uh, which uh, now has had some uh, modifications. So something that uh, we are going back to is uh, the uh, uh, new maps that were used in a different uh, topographer years from many years ago. So I would like, uh, I asked some people that if they feel comfortable with these uh, uh, maps that we have, tangential anterior maps, when we are trying to identify the location of keratoconus. Well, I'm not uh, pretty happy when I see uh, different kind of maps. Uh, so now the new maps that are used in the software are the Gaussian uh, maps, the Gaussian anterior and posterior maps that uh, basically hide the astigmatism and shows better the ectasia. So what tangential and axial maps were doing were just uh, focusing on the corneal meridian, that are the green lines. But uh, I don't think this is enough when we are trying to look or spot the exact location of the ectasia. So what the Gaussian maps also involve the transversal uh, component and average uh, the point, the steepest and the flattest of each of these points. As you can see, this is the way it's averaged the steepest and the flattest, and this is the formula that it used. And it's very helpful because it also hides the astigmatism, the astigmatic component, which is uh, kind of noisy when looking for the exact location of the ectasia. So as you saw in the maps, the location of the cone was likely to be uh, here in the posterior. But when we see the posterior Gaussian maps, we see the exact location of the cone that also match with the Gaussian anterior curvature. This is the screen of the Keratoconus software. So I will be unhiding uh, each of the maps that are shown in the, in the map. And I will try to explain them uh, quick to, to give you then some cases for you to see how, how they are helpful on the screen. Okay. Here we have uh, another maps in the lower part that are the elevation versus normality maps. And these uh, uh, maps are uh, displayed in respect to an aspherotoric best fit reference surface with a physiological asphericity. For the front, 0 0.2, and from the back, uh, 0 0.3. Also without, with no contribution of astigmatism, and average the corneal curvature to emphasize the irregularities. You see how they are very close also to the uh, Gaussian maps. Here we, what uh, Dan already spoke about, are the uh, epithelial thickness maps. And then we have the Bowman or stromal map without subtracting the epithelial maps and the total corneal thickness. You have to be careful when you are seeing these maps because you have the option of using different scales. You can use warm colors for thinning or cold for colors for thinning depending on what you want. For example, in this map is a cold uh, colors for the thinning of the epithelium. And here, these maps is that I like to use most is uh, warm colors for the thinnest uh, uh, part in the epithelial map of a subclinical keratoconus, another keratoconus uh, suspect. As you see the pattern, uh, it's very important. And this is a map of a post intracorneal ring segments implantation where you see thickening of the epithelium uh, in the inner uh, part of the, uh, along the, the intracorneal ring segment. Here are some samples of uh, patients with a subclinical, one patient with subclinical keratoconus. You can see the pattern of the epithelium. Here is another more advanced case. The worm is the thinning. And here we have the anamorphous image, which basically flattens that uh, uh, corneal uh, OCT section towards the superficial part of the cornea to help you see better the irregularity of the, of the cornea. 
Here it's a little bit more advanced case. And here is something very nice that the anamorphic image and all the section images uh, do. Due to the resolution of the OCT, you can see that this patient has two lines here. These are the changes in refractive index of the cornea. The first change is the epithelium, and the second change is the anterior stroma. So you can see that this patient has an intact Bowman layer, and also you can see the interface of the flap. Here is another patient where you can clearly see that this patient didn't have LASIK, this patient had PRK because you only see one change in the refractive index of the cornea, that is the anterior stroma, but not the two layers that you can see that is a Bowman layer here in the, in the image. The pattern deviation maps are very useful in, uh, in the cases of uh, subclinical keratoconus or early keratoconus because it helps us identify what is abnormal. For example, in this patient, these pachymetric maps look uh, quite uh, uh, abnormal, but when we subtract or we compare to what we, this, the normal population should be having, we see that it's more evident, the, the, the thinning of the cornea, and the localized point of weakness. Red on red points are basically the important points that the device used to identify if there is a problem uh, or ectasia or any kind of weakness in the cornea and are basically focusing all the maps that I mentioned uh, before. So the maps are not all. We are not including tangential maps, but we are using anterior and posterior Gaussian maps anterior and posterior elevation versus normality, the epithelial thickness map, the stromal thickness map, and the corneal thickness. And we use just the point where the cornea is more thin or where the cornea is more elevated or more steep. And all of these points get together, and they are uh, the, way that the, 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 the way that they are measured is that we use the body center of each, each of these points, and we see the location. So in a normal eye, those points are spread all over the cornea. So you get a wide, here is a wide uh, circle, you get a wider uh, circle. But when the keratoconus is a localized and all the points are very close together, you see a smaller white circle. The red and the yellow, in the same image, there are two ellipses that are the red and the yellow. And the yellow contains 95 and the red contains 99% of the keratoconic eyes body centers that are shown as a reference. So it also lets you know how likely the location of this keratoconus, the location of this uh, weakness is a keratoconus or not. Here are all the uh, indices that uh, we use. Some of the indices were already in the series. Uh, this is a new index that is very interesting. This is the symmetry index of the front and the back, but if you see, it's evaluating the symmetry from this circle, the superior part with the inferior, but it was not very helpful with cases of uh, central keratoconus. So many central keratoconus were uh, kind of ignored and were not being able to uh, catch without, uh, with this uh, symmetry uh, index. So it was developed a new symmetry index that evaluates this central part with this ring around and the symmetry between the two of uh, these points. It also gives us additional information that is the classification of the keratoconus. It classifies between abnormal keratoconus, myopic post-op, normal or borderline. And this is the accuracy of the performance of the uh, uh, software, of the keratoconus screening software. It gives you additional information for those who come from the Pentacam. It gives you the bad D uh, uh, score, the ABCD score. Uh, and also give you the morphology of the keratoconus, if it's uh, dog-like keratoconus, uh, nipple, snowman, and give you some other information about, uh, about it. Here is uh, another useful part from the keratoconus screening software. You can move from the right to the left, and also it gives you the enantiomorphism uh, image, what basically compares the right with the left Eye, so you can see the mirror image of the uh, point of interest that you are evaluating in each of the maps, elevation, curvature, and uh, thickness maps. 
So see, this is the actual software. So you go here to other, and then you uh, use the uh, intracorneal ring uh, segments uh, option that will help you to to plan this uh, surgery. You can select between one or two ring segments. You can select the optical zone that you're going to use. If, for example, you're going to use a five millimeters or six millimeters diameter ring segments, you will see how it changed uh, in, the, in the image. You can also change the uh, arc length of the segments that you are planning to implant, the uh, thickness of the implant, and you can select also where do you want to uh, center that treatment. If the treatment, you want to use the topographic axis or you can use the location of the keratoconus that was identified by the Gaussian anterior curvature maps. So this is a, a, a very useful uh, a, a tool to, to plan these uh, surgeries. Here I want to show you what I was uh, uh, showing you in the keratoconus screening maps. This is how you see the this is how you see the maps. This is how you can navigate between uh, eyes. What is the mouse? Okay. You can navigate between eyes very easy just by selecting right or left or use the enantiomorphism uh, option to see how is the mirror image of this eye, or evaluate map per map uh, uh, in the map, whatever map you want to, to, to evaluate between eye to eye. I would like to show you a very useful uh, a tool when it comes to evaluate the effect that you cause by uh, the surgery. So here, anterior segment, OCT, mapping. So here is the patient after surgery. And I can use the differential maps of sub subtraction maps to see what was the uh, effect that I achieved with the, with the surgery. I can select the map that I want to, to, to show, if, even if you're, whatever you are, if you're used to the tangential maps or sagittal anterior uh, curvature maps, it allows you to identify the location of the ring, the preoperative in the left, the postoperative in the right, and the effect, the flattening effect that was induced by the ring segments in the center. So here are some cases that uh, uh, were very useful for the identification of the location of the conus and the place where I wanted to, to center the, the segment. In some cases like this uh, TOC phenotype keratoconus, you have a big difference between the axis of the topographic coma and, uh, and now with the red on red or the points that are helping us uh, to identify the real location of this conus with this screening software. It allows you to tell exactly where do you want to uh, center your, your uh, uh, ring segment. For example, for these uh, cases, I use uh, different rings that are thicker in one end and thinner in the other to have achieve more effect in the area where the uh, cornea is steeper. This is another case. You see that it was very helpful, the Gaussian uh, maps, anterior and posterior, to identify and the red on red points, to identify the exact center where I wanted to uh, place my uh, ring. And here are some other uh, examples with the, with the preoperative, with the preoperative and postoperative pre-op, post-op, and the flattening effect induced by the intracorneal ring segment. Here is how you can clearly see the high definition of this uh, OCT. In, this is a patient who had an ectasia post-LASIK. So in red, you see the stromal uh, component of the flap. 
in blue you see the epithelial uh, map, just the epithelial uh, thickness. And even in green, you can see uh, in the right part the tear meniscus in this patient, and you can evaluate the, uh, the depth of the implantation of the rings and the location. Here is another case where you can uh, see a patient who had uh, one of the rings explanted in the right uh, part. So you can evaluate the scar that was left and everything with high uh, definition. This is a case that uh, came for an opinion because they were planning to explant the ring. This patient had rings implanted in a penetrating keratoplasty. And as you can see in this area, the incision, you can see in this area the ring was implanted in the incision, but it's not causing any dehiscence or any uh, problems with the incision. For, for that reason, we uh, decided to leave the ring inside and not uh, uh, do any further uh, treatment, and we discouraged the, the plan of uh, explanting the, the ring in this patient. That was also giving a very good uh, effect in his uh, visual performance. Um, I want to ask if someone thinks uh, this map is uh, uh, suspicious or uh, abnormal to you. Can you raise the hands, whoever thinks the, the map is suspicious or everyone agrees that it's a, a normal, symmetric, uh, steep uh, cornea? Yeah, well, it looked normal to me. Perhaps I, I, I was wrong. So when we have the the rest of the maps, we can clearly see that uh, the, the pattern deviation maps are showing that something is going on in this area. So I wanted to compare it with the, with the left eye. Sorry, I don't have here the image. And uh, uh, I compared with the left eye and the points were also in the image, in the mirror image were showing that it was uh, uh, in the fellow eye a problem also happening in the right location. Because it's a central uh, steepening, it was clearly identified by the two index I was discussing. The central symmetry index of the front and the central symmetry index of the back. So it was telling me that the cornea in the center was much, was much more steeper than around it. In the fellow eye, sorry I didn't, for some reason it's not the slide in the presentation, the epithelial thickness uh, pattern is much more clear than the epithelial thickness pattern in this uh, case. Perhaps adjusting the, the scale would it be more uh, evident in this uh, patient. Here is a patient that uh, had multiple surgeries. You can see the patient has a, a, a hard contact lens in top of the cornea. It has rings implanted and also it has an ICL uh, in his eye, so it helped us to evaluate all the possible ways and treatments that we uh, do for patients with keratoconus. In the ICL, I think it will be a little bit more of a talk next, uh, next, so I will not go in deep for the use of the calculation of the ICL, but I want to share this nice video that helped us to evaluate the vault in a patient where you are not sure uh, uh, what is happening and what is the behavior of the vault in this patient with different uh, illumination with different lights like scotopic, mesopic, and photopic pupils. So you see how the lens, the vault change with the uh, change of the pupil size. And this is uh, an option of recording a video of the uh, OCT uh, section maps while the patient is uh, having changes in the, in the light in, during the test. For cross-linking, is also useful to evaluate the demarcation line, and uh, that's it. It has many, many alternatives, and it can be used for any type of uh, cornea surgery that is done in keratoconus patients. I think it's the coolest uh, toy I have uh, used in, in ophthalmology for the diagnosis. I can't be more happy with this uh, device and the resolution of the images are very, very, very helpful, especially for complicated cases of cornea surgery. Thank you.